I'm Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Ward, who's been nicknamed the Blood Detective, for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. And Dr. Ward, you also hold several degrees and certifications, including board certifications in nutrition. Right. And we have been emailed some questions on our topic today of absorption of foods. Sure. All right. Lisa is asking, I eat a great diet full of fruits and vegetables, very little meat. I don't eat candy or sugary foods. I drink plenty of water. I don't drink coffee or soda, but I'm still around 15 pounds overweight and my energy is not so great. Could I have a problem with absorption of what I'm eating? And how do I know for sure? Yeah, this is a question that we hear a lot. Um, so let's talk about the importance of absorption and what malabsorption is. That's really what Lisa's asking because she mm -hmm. means malabsorbing, which means not absorbing normally. We all absorb, but for various reasons we might, we might have problems with absorbing maximally. So one of the reasons uh, for malabsorption, and which results in undernutrition, which could create issues like Lisa speaking about here. I mean, this is a woman who uh, has a fantastic diet on, on the surface, but she still can't get those few pounds off. And she's thinking, I'm eating the right things, but is Lisa absorbing the right things? So she, it sounds like she's malabsorbing. So uh, testing. In terms of testing, um, testing helps support you know, clinical suspicions that I might have, mm -hmm. but it's not the only thing that I would use. I would make an assumption that Lisa might be malabsorption, absorbing, particularly if she was older than 50. Uh, particularly, you know, 60, and between 50 and 60, between 40 and 50% of people malabsorb to some significant extent. So that means if you uh, eat, uh, you know, a food that has 100 milligrams, let's say, of vitamin C, you might only get 20% of that. Uh, so we're not what we eat, we're what we absorb from what we eat. And as we've said throughout many of these interviews, mm -hmm. and our health is the consequences of what we do not absorb. If we cannot absorb well, we don't heal tissues well, tissues break down, and depending on the whole combination of what's not really healing, we have this or that group of symptoms that are persistent. In terms of testing, again, as the, as the self-professed blood detective, you know, we do want to use lab to uh, look into some of, of the reasons why someone's not getting the expected results. So there are uh, all sorts of absorption tests or malabsorption tests. One of them is like a celiac disease kind of test. Celiac disease is a gluten intolerance, which you're genetically predisposed to, uh, which is not curable unless you remove gluten. But if that's happening with a person, which could result in persistent uh, you know, w retention of weight, mm -hmm. uh, that could be from gluten, even though the person doesn't have any digestive problems, because that's what a lot of people are thinking that, well, if I had that, I would know it, right? We sure. don't know that. Yeah. No, unless your doctors have checked for it. And if you don't have gastrointestinal symptoms, they would have no reason to. So malabsorption might be evidenced by a gluten malabsorption test. And on our website at www.intmedny.com, we have lots of articles and descriptions of the right test for gluten. So we won't spend any time here. Plus, we did an interview not too long ago about gluten and malabsorption. And then there is uh, something, well, again, I won't go through all the different malabsorption tests. Suffice to say that a practitioner like myself knows what those tests are, I and mean, we would check those on the blood work. And then uh, based on those tests and whatever other nutritional imbalances a, pa a person might have, we need to provide them what they need for their needs. So, for example, if we thought that Lisa really had malabsorption, we might do these special malabsorption tests, but let's say they, they're negative, they might look fine. That doesn't mean that someone is still not malabsorbing. If we check the levels of vitamin D and vitamin E and proteins, we might find low levels of things there. Mm -hmm. and that means either the person is malabsorbing or they're just malnourished. Although it seems like Lisa is eating well, relative mm -hmm. to her needs and her genetics and her athleticism, I, I just don't know the other factors. She might be on medications that you know block the absorption of certain things. Um, you know, we just don't know until we look at all of these issues. So, Lisa, there are tests that we can do to figure out if a person malabsorbs, and depending on the, the cause of that malabsorption, you want to treat that. If it's celiac disease, that's a whole other thing, and again, depending on what specific malabsorption tests are abnormal, that may lead us to think of different health problems. We have to treat those, and the successful treatment of those results in someone losing the weight. Uh, really going to look at the big picture. Yeah, you have to look at the big picture. Uh, uh, and of course, um, although Lisa thinks too that her diet is great, and again, it does sound on the surface like it is, mm -hmm. if we really spent the time to examine it, we might find some fundamental things there that are not so obvious to Lisa. So I something mean, again like a food log. Yeah, like a food log. So we'll end by saying that if a person truly is eating what they consider like really well 
and they are not losing the weight they want or maintaining the weight that they want, they have to consider that what they think is eating well for them is not for them. There's something else they might need to do. Maybe they need to enhance the intake of certain foods with certain nutrients, or maybe they need more protein. So again, it could look right on the surface, but it may not be ideal. So changing it up, even though it looks right, might be the way to go. Okay.